Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. There's been an awful lot of discussion concerning the leaks of RDNA3, and in this video, I want to provide some clarification to the specifications of the memory configuration of Narve 31. And this is actually pretty much official because it's actually based on patch notes, not to mention the fact that I have a kind of an early preliminary diagram, which may give you an indication of what the actual memory configuration could look like. And then we're gonna move on to a ton of RTX 40 information, as I've actually been hearing some very interesting things for dual configurations of an RTX 4070 and some early whispers of DLSS3. And we're going to take a look right after this message from the video's sponsor. You guys know the deal. If you want to build a new PC at any time, well, you're going to need yourself a cheap Windows uh, CD key. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So this patch note is on free desktop and basically it's an official patch note from AMD themselves. We'll get into the specifics in just a moment. Now this does seem to confirm the fact that we're looking at six MCDs, matching what one of my sources, and in fact a couple of my sources have been telling me regarding the configuration of Narve 31 for some time now. And as most of you know, initially many of us were suspecting that it was two GCDs and then there were basically some type of infinity cache structure which would pretty much tie it all together and then obviously we started to get more and more updates and now most of my sources are telling me it's a single GCD with several MCDs which form you know the actual infinity cache and also act as the memory controllers for the GDDR6 memory. You can see the specification on the right hand side which I think is most likely now around 12,000 shaders. Now one of my sources who actually gave me this configuration quite some time ago has just sent me a link. Now I don't know if they were the first one to discover this or someone else sent it to them. Either way it's on um, an official AMD kind of patch note on free desktop. I'll of course leave a link down below in the video description. And basically they have told me the following. Each GCD has um, a set of UMCs, so these stand for Unified Memory Controllers. So basically we're looking at six MCDs total, so it's six MCDs with two uh, UMCs per MCD. So basically speaking, if you do the math, we're looking at a 384-bit GDDR6 interface. Now again, you can look at the patch notes yourself, and they are, sorry, um, the you know, the update yourself on free desktop, but it's kind of lengthy, but that does seem to be the gist here. Now, it's worth noting, of course, that this information could be incorrect by AMD, but it is looking to be pretty likely at this stage that this is actually the configuration that we're going to see for Narve 31. And the main, cons well, the main, the main confusion at this stage is how much infinity cache there is. I've heard 192 from one source and 384 from another, and a third source has told me that it's actually both and AMD were doing internal testing. Now, obviously, because the number of MCDs is set to six, and each of these contains a portion, quote-unquote, of the infinity cache, this basically means that the MCDs themselves are going to be varying in the amount. So it could either be 32 or 64 megabytes. <sighs> I'm actually leaning towards more 192 bit, as I do suspect it should be adequate for 4K gaming. In fact, one of my other sources, not this source, but someone else told me that they believe that at 4K, AMD should be roughly on par with an RTX 4090 in raster performance. I still think that Nvidia will have the lead when it comes to ray tracing, but I'll talk more about Nvidia in just a moment. Curiously, and this is slightly off topic, 
The only area actually that we may see Nvidia actually overtake AMD, and I caution you guys, I'm not so certain about this, but um, if you look at the N33 configuration here, um, you can see that basically speaking, the laptop variants, the mobile variants are basically sipping power. This is not surprising, it's roughly on par with what you would expect for a mobile part, which is going to be roughly this performance target. But the desktop variant of N33, I have heard, actually could be less power efficient than NVIDIA's RTX 40 series. Why? Basically, and again, this could be incorrect. I'm not very certain of this information. But I have now been hearing it from a couple of people that AMD have basically been forced to crank the clock frequencies up higher than perhaps they'd initially wanted to. And without going into too much spiel about, you know, voltage and frequency curves and all of that stuff, basically there is, typically speaking, a sweet spot and there gets to like a point where, you know, you want like an extra 10 megahertz and you might as well just, you know, put a nuclear accelerator on the thing. Of course, I'm being ridiculous, but you guys get the idea. Like, you know, there is like that sweet spot where when you start going above that, the amount of extra power it requires is a lot more. And obviously heat can also be a thing. I'm going to be very interested to see whether this is the case. I still think for mobile anyway, NVIDIA are going to have a disadvantage um, and it's going to be very interesting as well, given that AMD have a lot of interesting technology that they can fall back on, like SmartShift, and I'm sure that future uh, uh, CPU and APU technology, along with AMD's discrete GPUs, is going to have a lot of very interesting uh, developments in this area. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of that plays out. And now I want to move on to the RTX 4070. So just recently, in fact, just yesterday, as of the time I'm recording this, I discussed an update from Copty7 Kimmy. You can see his tweet once again uh, on screen. And basically, all of the specifications um, haven't got any updates apart from the 4070. And you guys can see that the 4070 here, anyway, seems to reference 160 bit memory bus. And <laughs> one of my sources actually came back to me and told me that this was true. So, 10 gigabytes of memory. 160 bit uh, memory bus. So that's fine. However, I have started to hear some murmurs of a second skew. Now, what's confusing at the moment is whether this is like replacing the the version that Copity 7 is reporting here, whether Copity has a more updated version, whether one of our versions of these specifications is incorrect. And it's very possible that it's mine or whether NVIDIA are releasing like a TI variant of the 4070, you know, at some point either at launch or later. But basically the bottom line is I've heard that there's a variant of the 104 Silicon which seems to be destined for a 4070 and it has 192-bit bus. So of course this means 12 gigabytes of memory and the clock frequency of the RAM is still identical. So still 18 GPPS. Now I'm sure most of you can imagine that this would possibly make sense from a marketing perspective. So yeah. The specification I received for the 4070, this possible configuration anyway, is 192-bit bus, and this obviously means that the amount of memory also goes up as well to 12 gigabytes. Um, clock frequency of the memory still seems to be unknown, uh, possibly 18 GPPS, which is possibly faster than what Cocti 7 is stating here. But the big thing, of course, is 12 gigabytes of memory is considerably more and perhaps more palatable for, you know, marketing purposes. And let's just be honest, guys, goodness knows what's going to happen with the next generation of games. There is a lot of cool stuff that's happening, like, you know, sample feedback, direct storage, yada, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, no one ever has been like, hey, you know what would be great? Less memory, less memory bandwidth. No developer ever states that. So I'm going to be very interested to see which of these cards actually ends up being launched. I mean, Copty Server has been pretty accurate, but with that said, NVIDIA may be reading the room. There is also, of course, just simply the fact that all of these companies, and I've mentioned this like a billion times at this point, but all of these companies are just giving so many specifications to AIBs, their partners, to leakers, and so on, and it becomes extremely difficult to know, are they just messing around with specifications? Is it just the fact that they're trying to trick people? It's so difficult. However, 
as obviously we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the launch of the cards, basically everything is being tested at this point. Like, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how the cards actually stack up against one another. I'm sure most of you would agree that this that this generation is just... <sighs> It's just hyped. Like, I think everyone is just really excited to see what actually these cards are capable of. Especially if you didn't upgrade to an RTX 20 series. Like, let me know in the comments below. Did you upgrade to an RX 6000 series uh, or an RTX uh, 30 series card? Or did you just wait? Because, you know, if you didn't manage to get one because of the shortages you've just been holding out, especially if you were also someone who skipped over the R... Um, RTX 20 series, because let's face it, you know, if you had a 1080 Ti, for example, yeah, sure, the 2080 Ti was much faster, but initially things like DLSS weren't exactly fully functional in a lot of games, and now, of course, it's completely opposite. NVIDIA have you know, God, goodness knows how many DLSS games. Ray tracing is in pretty much everything. FSR2 is also becoming synonymous, of course, with upsampling as well. So I think a lot of folks are just really excited to see what the next generation can bring to the table. And also, speaking of DLSS3, so this is what I'm about to say is not new information in the DLSS3 I'm hearing is real. According to one of my sources, it's been, de in, been in development God, I can't speak today. Been in development for over one year. I don't have a specific time frame, but it's well over a year, allegedly. Now, what's quite interesting, though, with DLSS3 is that there are some improvements that I haven't mentioned previously. So there are performance improvements. Now, what I want to say off the bat is I do not know whether these performance improvements are going to be relegated to the RTX 40 series. It does seem like RTX 40 does have improvements to the tentacles. I think they're the next generation, which isn't really surprising. And obviously, this does mean that, technically speaking, anyway, there's a lot more power. There's a lot more grunts that can be bought to DLSS. So I don't know how DLSS 3, if it is real, although let's just be honest, We've had DLSS 1, we've had DLSS 2, 2.1, 2.2, you get the idea. So it's not exactly difficult to be like, oh, well, you know, I wonder what's going to be next. Um, with that said, I've also heard of these following improvements. Um, there is a bigger inference model. Uh, so this basically means that we're going to have visual quality much closer to the 16K reference image. There's also much better ghosting and... Uh, movement prediction it's also apparently easier to implement and i don't have actually that much information on what i'm about to say but apparently there's a change in the licensing methods now another source quite some time ago and i have to say that i'm also trying to find more about this so i'm saying this from an it's interesting but i have no faith in what i'm about to say but i'm going to put it out there anyway I want to stress, I have zero faith that this is true, but, but basically one of my sources quite some time ago told me in passing that NVIDIA were working on having essentially DLSS be a toggle. Now, if you guys remember that quite recently there was a driver update from NVIDIA and it basically was for DSR or dynamic super resolution where basically you could use like um, deep learning. It was a whole thing, NVIDIA pushed it, and long story short, it allows you to down sample from a higher resolution, let's say, I don't know, 4K or 8K or whatever, down to a lower resolution. So basically, it improves, like, you know, visual quality because of, like, you know, edges and all of that stuff. Now, that does not require a per-game, um, you know, implementation. It's basically a driver toggle. And I had heard that NVIDIA were trying to do the same thing with DLSS. Now, I don't know if this is actually physically possible because as it's currently implemented anyway, DLSS is basically part of the, is part of the post-processing pipeline of the game engine. Basically, the game engine itself, um, you know, runs this. It's pretty much one of the last steps of rendering. So you do like all the geometry stuff, blah, 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 ray tracing, blah, blah, blah. And then um, I think it's just, I can't remember if it's before or after the blurring. I think, you know, it's before the blurring stage. So if there is any blur associated with the image, so if you have like, you know, if you're one of those weirdos who likes like motion blur, not per object motion blur, just to be clear, but like, you know, screen space motion blur or whatever. Basically, it, it is before that. Um, and obviously this does mean that it needs to be implemented essentially by a game developer. And it kind of works like FSR, although of course there are now ways that, uh, 
that people are actually modding FSR2, for example, into games as well. So I'm going to be interested to see whether that's true. Again, I'm putting that out as a, it's interesting. I have no faith at the moment. I'm actually reaching out to a couple of sources to find out if they've got any information. No, I've got a little more on DLSS3. But I think that's just about it for this particular video. You guys know the drill. It's YouTube. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, leave a likey on it and uh, subscribe for more content. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.